What's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to use animations in React. This is going to be easy and very helpful, so I'm excited to show you. We'll use frame or motion because of how quick and easy it is. So what is frame or motion? Well, Figma is a very popular design tool for designing websites. And then Framer is also a very popular design tool. And then Framer created an animation library for React called Framer Motion, and that's what we'll be using today. So let's get into it. So I have a React project with Vite here, and I use Vite instead of Create React App. I have a video on why I do that. If you want to check that out, I'll have a card up here. It's like those heads where it's like, check out the link on the screen or down below or in Kansas. I don't know. Hopefully you find it. And to use Framer Motion, we will need to install it into our project with npm install Framer Motion. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. So we will have this app.jsx kind of just default page and we'll just kind of work off of that. So this is that. We have this button here where you can update the state. Um, so the first animation we'll, we'll do like an on hover and we'll kind of just scale that up a bit. It's a pretty popular technique. And then we can animate this uh, React logo a bit. Have some fun with that. Um, so the first thing you will want to do is import motion from frame or motion. And actually, let me make this a little bigger so it's easier for you to see. So motion is the core of frame or motion, this motion component. Uh, you can think of it as like a HTML tag or SVG with easy and powerful animation capabilities. And then if we want to animate this button, instead of you know just the uh, button element, you would do motion.button. And then that'll still be a button, but with the capabilities there. And then you can pass in other attributes or properties here like uh, while hover, for example, and then pass in an object, and we'll just say scale and 1.2. Save that. And then if you hover over this button, after refreshing the page, <laughs> we see it animates up 1.2 on the scale there. Scales up a bit. So very cool, very easy. And then let's get this image for the uh, React logo. Let's have some fun with that one. So motion.image. And then let's see, let's uh, rotate that. So we can just do this animate property. And then oh, pass in another object there. And then rotate. And we'll say. 360 for 360 degrees. And actually there's already an animation of that by default, uh, you may have noticed. So let's see, logo react, logo spin. So we will cancel out this one. Save that. Um, so back here in app.jsx, let's go ahead and just get rid of the V logo. And then we'll just have the one React logo centered. There we go. So I'll refresh this. And it spun 360 degrees. That was extremely fast. So we can add a duration to slow that down a bit. So another property here, transition. And I'll pass in the other object. Because you can add multiple things in here. We'll do duration, and let's do two. There we go, nice and smooth. Very cool. And then, so you can add multiple things in here. So let's do like a scale. We'll say scale that twice the size. Whoa. Ah, pretty cool. 
And so you can also tap into like keyframes and you can pass in arrays of values and it'll just kind of go through each of those. So we'll do scale one and then two and then back to one. Very cool. And then you can also add on to this. So let's say we want it to repeat. We can say repeat once. Kind of pulsing there, pretty cool. And another thing that we can do here is say like right on the X axis, pass in an array of like different coordinates for it on how you want it to move. So like this would be in pixels. So like zero would be like the starting point. We'll say a hundred pixels to the right and then over to, you know, minus a hundred from where it started and back to zero. And now it actually does these right when you save, it'll do the animation right away. So that's why I keep refreshing it. Um, but then I'll also show you how to do these on hover. So like when you hover down the page and it comes into view, it does the animation then. Awesome. Let me get rid of that repeat. I'll do command R for reload. It's like a nice smooth comes up at you and then back down and very cool. Bring this down another line so it's a little easier to see everything here. So another cool thing is if we add this drag property, say onto the button here. And now we can click and drag this button around. It's pretty awesome. And like if you like kind of let go while you're moving, it'll just kind of keep sliding, which is awesome. Um, but an issue with this, just out of the box, is you could uh, just slide it off the screen and it's gone. So there's a couple ways to prevent that from happening. You can add this drag snap to origin. And so if we have that, reload the page here. We, uh, you'll see it. You can still drag it around, but when you let go, it comes back. But another cool thing is you can let it drag and then you can set um, a reference point as a border and a constraint. And so it'll kind of hit that and bounce off, which is pretty cool. So I'm also gonna, Let's see. We're going to be doing the scrolling animation. So I'm going to make this page longer before I do the drag thing again. And then to add the border, I'm going to do instead of, I'm just going to make this like a parent div. And then close the parent div. And now we will want to use use ref to reference this outside parent component. So we'll call it border ref. We'll say use ref null by default. And then we will call this ref equals border ref. And then by default, this like as is, this div um, isn't full width. It's kind of like like along here. So I'm just gonna make that full width real quick. Just gonna throw in a little. Let's see width. Um, 100 viewport width, but that needs to be in quotes, viewport width. 
and then we could pass in this drag constraints and we'll pass in that border ref save that <laughs> we so we have multiple uh kind of pages here it's not centered anymore I'm able to okay okay sorry about that I went into the app.css and removed margin padding width and whatnot and I went ahead and added some uh, padding top to the logo just to kind of spread those out a bit um, so anyways on the drag constraints we passed in this border ref um, and so now when we drag this button, it will not go off screen. Very cool. Because you know, down here is still the border. And so it'll just kind of, but yeah, pretty uh, awesome little interesting animation here. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I wanted to show you the, uh, on hover so it'll only do it you know when you hover onto the screen there and that is also very easy so I'll just go a couple logos down to the third logo and then instead of animate we'll do a while in view and then just the same kind of animation properties whatever you want to throw in there I'll save that and now I guess these animations are probably already done you know, that initial one when you save but then as you scroll down and that comes into view that animation will trigger so that should be enough to get you up and running I hope this video was helpful if it was please give it a like drop a comment and say what's up and thank you very much for watching I'll catch you in the next one check it, check it.